in our world, we are being presented with many problems. Albert Einstein gave great advice in this matter when he said problems cannot be solved by the level of knowledge or awareness that created them. In other words, we have to get outside our own boxes. Well, a mystic sees beyond a box to what has been hidden or what has been forgotten, what is not seen. My name is Sharon Raji Maynard. It was curiosity that took me on a radical search for answers. And those answers came to me from ancient ones, those in spiritual worlds unseen to the eye. And this knowledge foundations my podcast, A Mystic's View. Come as you are to see situations through my eyes as we sit together. Diversity, uniqueness, is a natural condition, a natural outcome within humanity. And hearing diverse ideas and thoughts expands our own capacities. So I encourage you to listen to a mystic's view to hear, to be enhanced, and to consider other possibilities. I welcome you to this journey. Gosh, the sun is out again, bright, warm, and my sun porch beckons me to come out and write. And again, the sounds of freedom roars from military planes practicing their touch-and-go carrier landings, ready for the next deployment. I just noticed that the large leaves of my squash plants are drooping, so I'm going to put down my pen to revive them before I go on. Squash plant saved, water set on lavender patch, peppermint cut. Have you noticed how one job can lead to another and to another until another? And then you realize that an hour or so has passed. Or maybe it's just me, but there's always more to do, right? So I'm back in my sunroom listening to the jets roar, breaking up the energy of old negative structures and fears. Anyway, that's how I've chosen to use the vibrations for the planes. Breaking up energy from patterns that are stuck to allow light of the new to shine into our community. Cracking, cracking. I hope you enjoyed the last Mystics View episodes and have a sense of how old dogma can be shaken in a personal life. I sit to write today after I have had several back-to-back conversations with women I respect. A major component of female leadership and design is conversations and deep listening. In such glorious opportunities, new possibilities Insights, problems, and solutions arise. In my life before 1970, there was little to no time for such conversations. My life was kept busy with pregnancy, babies, two-hour feedings, changing diapers, cleaning house, fixing meals, shopping, and then add in your church assignments, the only idle time, was for church-type study. Yes, I am older, and I am on the retirement spectrum. But that is not the major component. My life box from my dogma was that spending time with other women was a waste. Why? I don't really know. It was just one of those subtle messages I absorbed. Probably because in any culture that elevates one and diminishes the other, the diminished one automatically is the second class. And everyone discounts the second class, even if you are in the second class. So in my before 1970 culture, males were elevated, females diminished. And although I was a female, and you would think I would scream and say, hell no, I did not. I was a member of the second class, 
and simply went along with the program without question. Baba, white mama sheep. I can't tell you how grateful I am that I was able to follow my nose of curiosity. But that is not what I want to share in the next three episodes. I want to explore some insights from my work with a female client. Now, I have worked with her on and off over the past eight years. She has an African-American father and white mother. And she is at another junction of expansion in her life and called me to help heal an inner conflict. She says she has had a sense of us versus them for as long as she can remember. In addition, she has found herself in a mild inner battle between the left brain logical world, only the physical is real, and her sensitive, intuitive messages urging her into untried new possibilities. It has left her experiencing two steps forward, one step back. Self-sabotage. She had certainly used the tools she knew, and then, help! I won't go over all the patterns, contracts, genetic trauma, parasitic interference that I was shown in order to remove those blockages. What really made another crack in my life box is what I want to share. First, let me tell you, I love paradoxes. A paradox is when you have two points of action seemingly opposed to one another. They're both flowing. When you stand back, you see they're both valuable. But it's like pull and tug. I love them because of teachers who gave me models that have enabled me to see with new eyes what a paradox can do. So here was my client. I sensed two strong active energies. One was her black heritage, the other her white heritage. As I sat, I got a feel that these two Inner tugs and pulls had not found a way to coexist within my client. When I am working in personal session, it is in the stillness, the inner space that the stories unfold for me, stories that I can reweave in order to heal. And this was no different. When I opened that channel for those two active energy forms, they showed up as mamas, one white mama one black mama, and the black mama was the loudest. I heard words like, stupid, listen, your fault, that were being thrown around in what she felt was justifiable anger at all the injustices that the white woman represented. And the white mama tried to stay nice, talk softly. I hurt too. Don't scream and then a withdrawal into herself. These two were certainly not doing well together. Once I had a grasp of the dynamic, I stepped in with energy to calm the situation and ask if they would be willing to help find a better solution. As the calm settled over them, they both agreed, and I suggested that the three of us take a journey. That surprised them. I said, You can certainly stay here and watch if you would like. They each considered and chose to step out of the mud pit of their clash to wander with me. Now here is where my training as a mystic Shaw woman kicks in. You may be very familiar with similar type journeys. I find them a most powerful way to get to the cause of a problematic situation. In simple terms, I am going to take these two mamas on a journey back in time. Yes, we're going to time travel. I have used this process hundreds of times over the past 25 plus years, and I'm always delighted at the solution it brings. But where am I going to take these two newfound sisters of mine? I don't know, and I don't need to know. I have some very trustworthy guides who know 
those unseen worlds like the back of their hands, if they had hands, which they don't. The declaration that I say to them includes the question, Asananda and Tag Healing Team, I want to go to an experience in the past on these women's genetics line, from which point solutions can be created. I didn't know if we would be taking one journey, some lifetime that they both had in common, or if we would be taking two journeys that day. So I asked my sisters if they were up for this exploration, and the answer was yes. Oh, yes, from both. Agreement, I smiled. We traveled swiftly. Energy has no time, space, or TSA agents to slow us down. We held hands and we lifted and moved and landed. And we landed as observers, witnesses. And we saw a circle of women far, far back in time. My sense was before any major occupation period. We look around the earth, certainly not populated with major cities. It's not divided into but we're not in cave experiences either. There is meadows and forests, and they're living close within nature. The women in the circle are of all ages, not a large group, maybe 15 to 20. They're solemn, they're concerned, they're sharing. Their communications are not just words, but thought waves also. It seems... They have a network of communication that is extensive. It's like a first internet model. Certainly, they had knowledge of what was happening beyond their village. It seems that it was this beyond their village situation that has caused them to meet in circle. Really, it's like a council. These women are clear. They are clear about their role in the village as visioner, creator of policy, and watchful of that which brings good and benefit to their loved ones or which might threaten. What has caused them to gather is that there is a plague sweeping through other villages, not a disease, but some beings who are invading villages with violence, bringing harm, even death, and entrapment. And as the women in those places have given voice, they have stood, and they have not been heard. Indeed, the louder they object, the greater violence from these invaders come to them, their children in their village. It seems as if there is no way to stop these hordes. Some villages have gone into hiding, And this council is discussing what they want to do for their village. And it is at this point in the story that I'm amazed. I watch a plan unfold. A plan that speaks of something I've suspected but have never been shown. The women, and I see no skin color, although there may have been there. The women decide to commit to at least three paths that I can see. Each of the three paths attract a small group of women. The first group makes a commitment to go forward and interact with those violent invaders in as much safety as they can. They are choosing this space in order to learn enough to find ways to defeat these enemies. The women know they will have to hide their vision, their voices, their gifts, and their knowledge in order to be amongst this group like a spy. Their hope is that by doing so, that they will have enough knowledge that at some future time they can rejoin and arm their sisters with skills that will defeat these forces. 
The second group has gathered to commit to holding the joy, the music, the dance, the voices in acceptable ways, of course. They know they must also pretend to be simple and not threatening. They do this because they have great faith in their spy sisters. Then the third group I see gather to commit to holding firm to the connection to Mother Earth. They choose to sing, drum, dream, that they will hold the values that create relationships that can root deeply and benefit all. They will also hide their gifts from prying eyes to appear simple. I look at the two mamas I'm with, and I see there are tears in their eyes and in mine. We hold each other and see that we were all on this journey together. I turn to my client's black mama and ask, We are ready to sing loud, to dance strong. Are you willing to teach us? And the strongest bear hug surrounds us, and she sings, yes. And I turn to our white mama friend and ask, are you ready to teach us how to stand in authority and cause full removal of the violent hordes? And with tears in her eyes, she sobs, I don't know how. We too, Black Mama and I, embrace her and I whisper, but I do, I will teach you, and we will fulfill this promise together. I pause and I wonder, what are the gifts that other ethnicities plan to retain and then return to the circle of women. And as I sit in the warmth of my south room, the sun going down, I am taken to 1997 when Mother Earth Gaia called to me and spoke. Amongst many things that she said, she was clear. I am here to tell my daughters, drop the costumes. Drop the costumes. Now I understand. And I see another weaving to share. 2019 in my sunroom. Circles, circles, back in time. 1997. Mother Earth, and then further back to give us the why. Oh, life, what a mystery you are. Thanks for coming along on this episode. These various sharings may stretch your mind, challenge your dogma, awaken new possibilities, and or even resonate with your own experiences. I'd love to hear any of that. And you can find me on Facebook under A Mystic's View and the same YouTube, A Mystic's View. When you see the value of this podcast, please share it with your friends. A Mystic's View is also on Patreon, where those who want to support and be a part of this growing community can participate. That would be at www.patreon.com forward slash a mystics view. The pressures of this world is rising. And what does that mean? How can you respond? My intention is, is that through this podcast, you will gain more insight, encouragement to discover yourself. Until next time, blessings. <laughs>